Hi YouTube, so today I'm going to be talking about Sun in 8th house. Now the Sun is our identity, it is our ego. It is how, what we perceive ourselves as, or maybe like the general aura that, the vibe that we give off, you know? Not all the time is the vibe that we give off, but it's, it's our essence, essentially. Now, wherever the Sun falls in, whatever house it falls in, it is the area of your life that is lit up. It is the area of your life that you identify with. Now the eighth house is traditionally ruled by Scorpio. Your sun does not have to be in the sign of Scorpio, but it, the eighth house is just ruled by Scorpio. It's ruled by Pluto. Pluto is the planet of death and transformation. This eighth house has to deal with aspects of life regarding monetary gain. It also has to deal with like I said before, death and transformation, the hidden mysterious things that we do not understand. It's, it uses a lot of our unconscious and subconscious mind to make sense of things. It is a very regenerative house. A lot of transformation happens here. Now the sun is our self. So you'll find with these people that they are going to have a lot of turmoil in their life at one point. It may not be all the time, but you're going to find that there's something that happens in their life regarding things of death, of money, of shared finances, of um, hidden mysterious occult things. Like they may join a religion and then their lives is transformed. Their identity is changed due to these factors. So there may be death that will transform them. There may be Things that have to deal with um, money, which usually come after death. They are Venus is more prone to inheritances, but I'm not saying that uh, the Sun in eighth house won't be. Uh, it just has to deal with uh, inheritance and possessions, essentially. And your self, your self um, control. Here, you're gonna have someone that you'll find will at one point due to the themes of the eighth house change and then they will gain more self-control and you'll find that they are very good with persevering with what they want and they're very good at keeping their emotions to their themselves they identify as a lone wolf as a pack as not as a pact by themselves. Even if they're not, they will always feel that type of isolation. And it's not the isolation of the 12th house where it's like they they are naturally like that. You'll notice that the sun and the eighth house people are more isolated in their feelings towards other people and they're more isolated with their affections of love and their genuine feelings for you. They are a little bit more sensitive, not sensitive, but um, cautious when it comes to these topics. They are a lot more in their heads when it comes to the things of sex, of death, of transformation, of their personal feelings. They're very psychoanalytical and they are prone to self-probe at themselves. Now, because the sun is here, they're, they're prone to self-analyze their identity. Who they are as a person is probably going to change a lot. You may not notice it. Um, change is hard for them and it happens gradually and a lot of the times they may mess up. So that's why they are more kept to themselves is because they want to be in control of how you perceive them in a sense so if they're struggling they don't want you to see them as weak is what i'm trying to say here and it's not to say that they're cold they're not cold they're actually very deep individuals with a lot of emotions and not necessarily a lot of emotions but deep felt emotions if that makes sense um what was i saying so this they have a good self-preservation in the sense that they're able to preserve their identity. There may be a lot going on underneath, but they will show you what they want you to see. And that is a very important thing to notice that they're very strong and they're very good at managing their identity, how you perceive them, um, what, how they come off and stuff like that, because this is the sun. I remember that we're dealing with the sun, we're not dealing with all of the emotional planets. We're dealing with the identity of a person. So when you have the themes of control, they are actually very good with self-control. They're very good at saying like, okay, these habits aren't good for me. I'm going to stop. You know, I'm going to change. I'm going to do that. And it may take them a while, but once they do, like 
it's hard for them to revert back just because they have this grit to them that doesn't they don't want to fall back it's almost like um uh it's a waste of time it's like they viewed it as like what's the point like you know i just did all that so they have a lot of self-control in those areas and they actually may be very controlling and they may come off as someone that manages their assets very well very good with money very good with schoolwork very good with um controlling other people telling people what to do managing these things because it's like they are masters of doing this to themselves um i want to talk more about what i like to call pulling the roots so every eighth house placement that a person has especially when it comes to the self so personal um planets falling into the eighth house there has to do deal with this thing of pulling the roots pluto will bring things into your lives regarding sex death taxes marriages joint um, assets and things like that controlled resources and the occult and religions and all of that and what this does is that everything may seem fine and you might be whatever whoever you are and all this but then pluto will come down and destroy it because pluto is a planet of transforming you will not view yourself the same in a year from now, in a month from now. In you're constantly um, changing and adapting because you guys can get a little bit obsessive when it comes to how you view yourself. If you're disgusted with yourself, that is enough to make you change. You know what I mean? Uh, nobody's really opinion will affect them that much unless they have more of an insecure personality, you know what I mean? So, um, what I mean by pulling the roots is that Pluto comes to pull out the roots of, Pluto comes to be like, you, you think you're this person, you think this is all you are, but now I'm going to throw you a shit face of turmoil and you're going to have to pull your roots, you're going to have to change your habits, you're going to have to change your ideologies and your beliefs and how you view yourself and how you treat others and all of this it's like pluto's coming to pull your roots and so that you can plant new seeds to make them grow and be like oh not only can i weed out my bad stuff but i can also once i weed out my bad stuff now i can plant new seeds and now i get to pick what seeds i want to plant for myself that's the best way i can put it so they're very in control of who they are and who they become after they experience the pulling of the roots. Um, they, through these things though, through these, they, unfortunately, this is just a theme. Like, you know what I mean? Pluto will come to take, but once they, once it takes, once it destroys something that you thought once was, which is yourself, once it destroys that, it is your option and in total your control whether or not you want to fix yourself and change yourself because this is a Scorpio energy and Scorpio energies are very powerful energy they these people have a very powerful presence now when it comes to changing self with the Sun in the eighth house here you're gonna have someone that has the power to control how they change and how people perceive them but if you're someone that um, spirals downward instead of spiraling upward that is all in your control because here you have pluto i mean the, the eighth house gives your self a little bit more um of a thicker skin of stronger stuff so no matter what you go through no matter how painful it is you will always like rise from the ashes if you choose to and when you choose to rise from the ashes, once Pluto pulls those roots and you identify what needs to be changed and you fix who you are and how you treat yourself and how you treat others and all of that, that's when the blessings of your life come in. Once you adapt and change and you let go of what you thought you knew of yourself, once you let go of that and you embody your the, the new change, the new change that of... of of the person that you are that's when good stuff will come flowing again because it's easy for these people to start thinking that they have bad luck it's really easy because if they don't always feel in control because they don't always feel in control that makes them become controlling you know what i mean and so they may not feel like they're in control but because they don't feel like they're in control that makes them want to be in control so 
once you let go of that control and you go with the flow and you let go of what needs to let go and you deeply analyze yourself and you deeply analyze what needs to be changed and how you need to view things, more perspectives come when traumatic experiences happen. Um, it's not always traumatic experiences. It's more like uh, groundbreaking or just life-changing experiences will always change your identity. Now here you're going to find someone who's very woke. Um, woke in the sense that they are very, um, they understand their behaviors and why they do the way, things that they do. They understand how they are in relationships because the eighth house rules intimacy and deeper relationships, which I will get into. So because they have a deeper understanding, it, it's really hard for them uh, I mean, it's really easy for them to understand who they are. But now I'm going to get into something a little bit deeper here. You're never going to come to a conclusion of who you are because it's always hidden. The eighth house is a little bit hidden. The energies are hidden. There's always more to discover. So you're never at, you will try, I swear to you, you will try to define yourself. You will try to be like, I'm like this, these are my qualities, these are my things, but you'll always come to a conclusion, but it's like, but I'm also this, I'm this, but I'm also this, like, I'm cold, but I also love so deeply, I'm strong, but I'm also really sensitive, like, you're gonna find that power play where it's like, I'm, I'm more than one thing, it's because your personality has hidden aspects, and the whole sun and eighth house is to like, you're going to have to dig those things for yourself. And you'll find those things through the themes of the 8th house. Now, let's talk about intimacy. And intimacy here is a touchy subject. Not, okay, It's really not. You guys love, 8th house people and Scorpio people love to hear about how they're deep in love and all of that. But let's just be real with each other here. Intimacy is something that you guys crave. It's something that you guys love you will be very transformative in your relationships your relationships will always transform you whether they're platonic or romantic they will always transform you you will always realize deeper things and you will always realize that they're not good enough for you but it may take you some time anyways but once you realize that like you literally become a very strong and you become embodied in your power so the more you get hurt the stronger you become and the more you you discover about yourself, the more you will understand yourself. So intimacy here is going to be hard because these people, like all 8th house people, have a wall, have trust issues, have this. That's because Pluto always comes around in their lives to kind of shake some stuff up and it will uncover things that they have never dealt with. And to be honest, intimacy can be a little bit scary for these people because it's like, it's just like when you have trust issues, when you understand yourself and you understand your dark sides, when you understand your sides that no one really understands, when you grasp the concept of death, when you grasp the concept of your unconscious mind, like these people have a gift kind of with that and they're very analytical. So good luck getting anything past these people without them noticing. But when you're someone that's very self-aware and you understand yourself, it's hard for them to find people that they feel okay sharing every aspect to themselves. They're not just like one person. And this isn't like, uh, it, it's not like they have multiple personalities, like a Gemini or stuff like that. It's like, there's just multiple sides to them, if that makes sense. There's, there's the side that they show everybody. There's also the things that they keep private. Now, Pluto here, the 8th house, it has to deal with unconscious thoughts. And the 8th house has to deal with very deep unconscious thoughts. And they th they search for partners and stuff like that, that, that they can share that intimacy. They crave that intimacy. But the problem is, is that they won't, they're a little bit restrictive because they know, they know how much and how many aspects of them there are how many aspects and versions and sides and concepts and ideas and pain that they've been through. They understand all of that stuff. So they need to make sure that you're someone that they can open that up to and share it without being judged. 
So they they crave that. They want to know you just as much as you want to know them. But with them, it's a slow process, and they're always changing, and they're they 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 don't speak their feelings very well. You can always you guys. I'm sorry, like Scorpio and eighth house placements. They're not good at concealing their feelings. They may not tell you anything, but because they change so much, you can always tell when something's going on in their lives. I have eighth house placements too. It's and when the sun is here. It's like your persona, it's your aura. So people are always going to be able to tell when something's up, when you're going through it. That doesn't mean that you're someone to be like, yeah, I'm depressed, I'm sad. Some people with this placement that vibrate at a lower frequency will do that stuff for attention because these people can be a little bit of attention seekers if they're, if they're not giving like their respect and all of that. But what was I talking about? I don't remember, but let's move on to the next thing. So, relationships, oh, relationships, these people have destructive behaviors, bro. Very destructive behaviors when it comes to, um, whether it's drugs, whether it's the way they talk to themselves, um, a lot of them can be very hard on themselves if they feel as if they're not doing good enough or they don't have a lot of self-worth or self-respect just because of whether it was how they were raised, how they were treated as a child and all of that stuff. They, they remember a lot of abusive patterns that happened to them as a child. And it's a very psychological aspect placement here to have because it's, um, it carries on with you. So, um, it affects your psyche, you know what I mean? And you remember that stuff. So, the, the self-destructive patterns and all of that, they can always get into relationships that they know aren't good enough for them, and they can actually treat themselves poorly and can be prone to addiction if they allow themselves to be. Like I said, they're Scorpio and 8th house placements, uh, they're very, they're not like the 12th house where the 12th house has no fucking self-control whatsoever. Um, no, you guys can dabble with the dangerous, with the unconscious with the unknown with the spirits and the death and all that stuff that you guys want to dabble around with but um those self-destructive behaviors they can ruin your relationships with people they they can if you don't control your self-destructive behaviors they will manifest into who you are and that may cut ties with people but i think everybody with this was meant at one point realizes that they're not, you guys aren't dumb like you know you don't need me to tell you this stuff you just need me to reassure you that what you think is real anyways so relationships in general are taken seriously or the not all of their relationships but just like how everybody has their young youthful flirty relationships i don't mean nothing these people have it too not every relationship that they have is like a deep intimate one they do fantasize about having it they do think about like having a soulmate or whatever it is but they they can be in a relationship but they won't take all of them seriously in fact they may think their partner is like dumb not dumb like um dumb mentally or iq wise but just like dumb in the sense that it's like you are so dumb because you don't even know who the fuck you're dealing with like you know almost like that it's like they don't let people like push them over and stuff like that but um the union that they have in their head is it, relationships and stuff like that are viewed as an enhancement to life they have a great understanding of what life is what life means the concrete the spiritual life after death they have that and they understand that relationships are more of an enhancement in life so that deep union in their eyes it's like i don't need that but that would make my life really fucking cool like that would enhance my feelings that would enhance my emotions and you're right it will it will enhance your self-identity it will enhance your abilities if you choose a right partner and stuff like that there can be a little bit of um psychic influences here uh you will have that vibe that radiates power and um deepness people can tell that there's more to you there's complex things 
um, and you guys dread because you understand life and you understand like okay you live and then you fucking die and that's it a lot of these people like are very comfortable with the idea of death like it it's not something that scares them some of them can be big risk takers because it's like this is the only life i have like i have to experience things i have to seek it i have to search for it i have to find more meaning i have to I have to connect with what I have now because I don't know what's after. There may not be anything after. So that's why relationships are seen as a life enhancer, why um, experiences are seen as life enhancer. That's why they can be very bold and courageous because it's it's like it's that mindset where it's like in five years will this matter? If I if I go and tell that person how I feel about this, if I go and I take control of this, if I go and I experience this, and if I go in, in this relationship, if I do it now, will it matter in five years? Will it matter? Will it improve my life? Will all of that? And if the answer is no, like, no, stand up for yourself. It's okay to put yourself out there because a lot of them, they're just going to be like, bro, like, this is me. Like, this is what I want to do. Um, like, I'm going to do it because it's that thing. Uh, how do I explain this? It's just, it's almost like they know that it doesn't last forever. So they're willing to play the game of life. And they play it very good. Because you won't even realize that they're playing it. They, you may not even realize that they're playing you. Who knows? I don't know. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.